We are fortunate to report a strong set of results considering the difficult environment we find ourselves in. The B share dividend is up 57% on the second six months of the last financial year. Part of the reason is the COVID relief given in the last six months, which has drastically reduced in the first six months of this financial year to around 5 million. Collections have recovered to close to pre-COVID levels, albeit off a lower base. There was a question whether we'd be able to continue to sell assets in a deteriorating market and are pleased to report that we have transferred 498 million rands worth of sales in the first six months and are in the process of transferring a further 647 million. The discounted book is around 4%. We have continued our active investment into solar power plants. The cost of the installation has been decreasing and combined with the large increases in the electricity charges, the return on investment continues to improve. This has driven our aggressive rollout of solar within our portfolio. 7.3 megawatts have already been installed and a further 3.6 megawatts are underway. Arrowhead continues to do everything it can to retain existing tenants as the cost of finding new tenants is far greater and extremely unpredictable. The loan to value has been well maintained, especially considering the dividend paid and capital expenditure invested in our properties. Arrowhead further managed to improve its strictest covenants to better align them with other banks during the period. This is on the back of the successful sales program, stronger remaining portfolio, and a general success of the business operations. Arrowhead continues to strengthen its portfolio through the sale of non-core properties that do not meet its investment criteria. Arrowhead is set out to sell all properties that do not have high tenant demand and that are not capable of rental growth over the long term. The strong sales performance has flowed into the current financial year. 140 million has been spent on capital expenditure. Arrowhead believes that this is critical to, to continue to invest in the portfolio to protect existing and future revenue streams. There are many good reasons to slow down capital expenditure in this environment, but this will have negative consequences down the line. Tenant focus remains a core strategy for the company. Tenant retention has increased from 69% in 2019 to 85% in 2021. This is a result of the improved focus on tenant satisfaction. The operations team have seen that we have been able to unlock further letting opportunities from existing tenants by keeping close to tenants and trying to understand their needs better. Arrowhead continues to implement measures to further de-risk the business and strengthen the balance sheet. The balance sheet is in a stable position with gearing at 41.4% including derivatives and 39.8% excluding derivatives. As mentioned, this is even after paying our full dividend and capital expenditure invested in the portfolio. Due to the successful sales program, Arrowhead was becoming overhedged and cancelled swaps to the value of 1.7 billion. This strengthened ICRs to make sure we were well within our covenants going forward. The hybrid property management model adopted by Arrowhead continues to best position the company for the tough operating conditions being experienced on the ground in the current environment. A major focus is kept on strengthening and building company culture. I would like to thank the entire Arrowhead team for the excellent performance in the most trying of times. Surveys have been done with Arrowhead and the property managers to better improve relationships and performance. The MRI property management system is being implemented at the moment, which will allow for better and quicker access to information. We normally give you a, a kind of a breakdown in terms of our distributable income. Now, this, of course, is consolidated with the Indo place. So uh, the things that I want to highlight to you is that you look at the revenue and the revenues actually drop by 16%. It's very important that we contextualize that we're not we're not comparing a stable portfolio. So we've naturally sold assets. And if you got more assets last year, you'd naturally have more revenue last year, including costs. Uh, and of course, this year you got less revenue because you sold basically over a billion rands of assets uh, in the period. So of course your revenues drop, but your revenues drop by 16%. 10% of that is due to the sales and the other 6% has been you know, an impact in terms of your core portfolio. So on your property expenses side, You've actually reduced your property expenses in nominal terms by about 9%. Uh, and of course, on your admin costs, you know, no matter how many properties you sell, your admin costs are your admin costs. So if you look at your cost to income ratios, and we've tried to split it out for you because once again, it consolidates into place. And we wanted to show you basically from an error perspective. So from an error perspective, yes, your cost to income has grown from 42.4 and it's grown to 45. And if you take your property related costs, excluding admin, which admin costs, your costs are generally the same, even though your revenue might be reducing. Your property cost has increased from 38 to 39.4. I won't talk more. Let's go to the next slide. So the apologies, I've got the thing. Okay. So the question is: You've now been you've been told that you're getting 23.19 cents per B share. 
Last year, this time, we gave you, we'd be promising you an amount of 30.65. So I guess the logical question is, well, what shifted? Where did, how did the 30.65 become 23.19? So what we've tried to do is we've tried to break it up for you in component parts so you could see, you know, where you've taken the knots, okay? So on the area of operations, your court portfolio has gone back by 11%, and that's costed you 5.5 cents in terms of your B-share, okay, in terms of that there. I'll talk a bit more about that in the next slide. Then you also have assets that you're selling. Now, the market's very focused in making sure that we strengthen our balance sheet. But it's very important for the market to understand that there's a cost, there's an income cost to strengthening your balance sheet. So let me give you an example. You got one asset. The asset is worth 100 Rand. Last year, you were earning property income of 11%, which means you were earning 11 Rand from that asset. Okay? Now, this year, you sold the asset. So you don't have the asset anymore, but you got 100 Rand that you put in your bank. Okay? And presently, we've got facilities, debt facilities. So when we put that 100 Rand in, we're probably saving anything between 55 to 6%. So your return on that 100 Rand is now 6 Rand at 6% versus the 11 Rand that you got last year. Now, that's your dilution. From 11 to 6, you've lost 5 Rand of income dilution by virtue of sales. Now, that is not permanent, but in a low interest rate environment, which we're currently in, that impact is severe, and that explains why you lost three and a half cents in terms of what we disposed to strengthen the LTV so that we could so you use the money for other commitments, which I'll talk you to. Then you've got your net finance cost that's related specifically to your portfolio. A few things happen in this period. So the first thing we do, and it's important for us to understand this, in our growth phase of the fund, what, what did we do? We bought properties and we took out debt. But to manage the risk associated with the debt, we would also take out hedging, that was at the same proportion between 70 to 80 percent of our debt was basically hedged. Now, what have we done in the last three years? We started selling down assets. And as we started selling down assets, we started paying debt back. The problem that we've got is, and because we got into COVID, now ideally what you should be doing, as, you, as you're canceling those bonds and reducing your debt, you should also be canceling your hedges. Okay. Now, what we wanted to do is we wanted to preserve cash, so we basically didn't cancel those hedges. And we found ourselves in a position that if we had not cancelled those hedges, we probably would be in about 110, 120% by year end being overhedged. Okay? So what did we do? The board's policy has always been between 70 to 80. We have now settled these swaps. And a lot of these swaps were taken out in 2017 and 2018, which is well before we ever expected to be at interest rates at current levels. Okay? So those swaps that basically ran as far as it could, we can pull those swaps at an amount of, of uh, I think there's a question that's come up, so I'm just going to answer the question. We cancel the swaps at basically 100 million rands, but at the same time, we will get a benefit of a low interest rate for at least for, for the possible future, for as long as the interest rates stay the way they are. Uh, so that's the important part in terms of basically the, 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 final, the, the swaps. And if I go to the head office cost, you're probably looking at 6%. That's very much inflation in terms of your salaries. But we've also spent a lot of money in terms of legal and professional fees to navigate the current environment because it is being complex and uncertain, and we needed the advice. So your income from Depula, I think Depula put out an excellent set of results, and we're very grateful for the dividend that they paid, and that's now added to your income. Uh, at the same time, Indo Place, you know, they are going through a bit of a transition. They've gone from a pre-COVID environment to a post-COVID one. And a lot of the tenant base, which does fall into the low areas and have taken pain, you know, a lot of your retrenchments that you've seen in the market, job losses have come in that area. So they basically have taken pain, but they've got some good plans in place, and hopefully when they implement those plans, there's upside in future periods. The one last point that I want to talk about is you'll notice there's a line called distributable income to Asians. Now, Arrowhead has got, is only one of four counters in the market that has got a dual A and B share class structure. Now, the other three counters, for whatever reasons, you know, it could be that they found themselves in trouble in terms of possibly allocating too many A's. Now, what this has done for them, in an environment where your income is declining and your A share is getting a preferential return and their income A share is growing in returns, naturally your B share is taking the knock. So those counters have found themselves in trouble because their B shares are not, they're not getting their full value out of the, you know, the potential benefits of those businesses. Now, this is slightly different from Arrowhead. So Arrowhead is the one structure which is efficient. And let me tell you why it's efficient. We've got less than a billion Bs, but we've only got 63 million A's. Now, when we were coming into COVID, there were a lot of funds out there that were actually issuing capital. 
at 50% discount to, to do the net. Now, I'm saying if you have that as an option, so with us, we were fortunate that we already started our disposal program and we had cash flow through the disposal, so we didn't have to resort to that. But had we had to resort to that, if you have a choice between a B share that you're going to be issuing at 50% discount to net and an A share, which I'm not saying it's not expensive, but you can issue it at 90% or 100% of net, wouldn't you opt to go to the A share? So all I'm saying is the A share offers you optionality, and like anything, as long as you manage efficiently, it's a great instrument. And, and that's why when we did the merger between Arrowhead and Gemro, we offered to keep it because it provides us the optionality and we don't know when we're going to use it.